Hi, and welcome to this Sonicware Live and Bass and Beats tutorial video. The Sonicware Bass and Beats is a sample based drum machine with a built in monophonic wavetable based synthesizer engine. It also has features like a sequencer, FX, multiple playback modes, sync in and out, MIDI in and out, line in, and overlays used for deep editing. This tutorial will cover as much ground as possible, but it's intended to be used alongside the PDF manual that you can download from Sonicware's website. The tutorial is split into two sections. This first section looks at drum editing and kit editing with bass sequencing and editing coming in a later video. So let's dive in. So let's start by having a look at the way this is put together. We've got a device here with 16 knobs, one of which is an encoder type that's used for making fine adjustments. Got a power socket here on the left hand side, which is the same plug type that comes on Volker power supplies. So if you're looking for a power supply, just buy one of those. Power switch, which we hold down to turn on. We've got a display, sync in and out, which is like analog style sync. Again, like the Volkers, pocket operators, that kind of thing. Uh, we've got MIDI in and out sockets. We've got a line in, what we can send through using the mixer. Line out that you can send something like a sound card uh, and then headphone socket on the end. Got a, a built-in speaker on the back. There's a battery compartment. It takes six double A's. There's 16 rubber buttons across here. 16 steps for editing steps in our sequence, and then 27 keys. So on the left-hand side, we've got three knobs. Uh, these are used for mixing together the levels of bass, drum, and line in, as well as setting sending effects to those. Then there's two rows of four knobs that are used for sound editing. We've got our docking and effects okay, controls over here a BPM knob and then finally a volume knob at the end. So the buttons are mostly used for making edits. We've got shift and function buttons here that we'll come to in a bit. Uh, we've got transpose for the keyboard, a clear and OK for cancelling and confirming operations. A transport control with play and record. On the end we've got the page uh, buttons that show which page we're in when we're editing our sequences. The steps below and the LEDs above are used for programming in rhythms and things into our sequences and then the keys below that are used for playing our sounds. And then also we've got access to menus on the text below using shift functions. So I've inserted a power supply lead here and a line out a plug so we can get a clean recording. I need to hold down the power button for a second or two just to let it turn on. Then by default the first pattern will load and then we can press play here to play a pattern. And by default, the speaker will be on. If we want to mute that, we can hold function and press this key here. That will mute the speaker. Function is used for accessing features that are underneath buttons in lowercase letters and underneath the keys here. And the shift is used for accessing features that are in lowercase letters below the knobs. Um, if we want to, for example, change the overall pattern level while this plays, we can hold shift and turn this, this knob and that will lower the volume. If we don't want to keep holding shift while we do this, we can press function and shift together and then that puts us in shift lock mode. If we want to get out of that again, just press shift. So while our pattern plays, we can alter the volume and tempo using these two knobs. So pressing play. That alters the overall volume out of the headphone and line out socket. We can boost the level of the headphone volume as well by holding function and pressing this gain button here. And then we go into a menu that we can alter it with the value knob. So normal and then soft and loud. That doesn't affect the overall volume of the device, just what's going to the headphones. So let's load up another uh, preset pattern. So press the pattern button. These steps now become our uh, pattern select buttons and these rubber buttons here become our bank select uh, buttons. So there's eight different banks of patterns. The uh, first two have uh, presets in them. So if we press this, this will load pattern two in bank one. So we get a different uh, piece of music. It plays like that. If we double tap the pattern button, it turns orange and then we can select multiple patterns. So when pattern two finishes, pattern three will start to play. Okay. 
So that way we can build different patterns and have a song play through in a progression. So I'm just going to go back into pattern two and I'll show you what the mix of knobs do. So as we play, we can alter the level of the bass with this knob and the drums with this knob. Uh, this would alter anything coming in on the line in socket, but we haven't got anything plugged in, so. So you can hear what's coming from the two separate sections of the bass and beats. We've got a bass section here and a drum section that we can select by using these two different buttons. That switches us between editing those two different parts of the bass and beats. So all the stuff for bass specifically is labeled in pink to match this and all the stuff for drums is labeled in blue to match this section. So as I mentioned earlier, these are our page buttons. These show us which part of the pattern we're in. This pattern that's loaded now is longer than the 16 steps we can see on the screen, it's 64. So as we play through, we'll see these will change color to show us where we are in our pattern. So page one and three is shown on this button and page two and four is shown on this button. If we press this, for example, we go to page two, press this twice, we're on page three, and this again, we're on page four. So you can see from the different color combinations, we're getting to different parts of the same pattern. I'll try to make this a bit more clear when we start to program our own stuff into the sequencer, but that's just a quick example. One of the shift functions we have on one of the buttons here is mute. This is just for the drums. So if we switch on mute mode, we can see all these are lit up. As we play, these will flash to tell us which of the drum sounds are playing. That's the names that are written on all these blue sections here. Then we can then switch these on and off for, to get a bit of performance going. So that's an additional way to make quick edits to your pattern or to have a bit of a live performance. So we press function and mute again to get out of mute mode. So here also we have our random mode. This is a playback mode. If we turn it on to begin with, nothing's gonna change. When we play the pattern, it'll be the same. So the way random plays is it, it can slice up a pattern into sections and then randomly pick bits and play them in different order. So I'm just gonna leap ahead of here a little bit and go into one of the uh, base uh, edit menus. So we just press function and base. We get lots of different settings for the pattern. We get to the random one. It's off at the moment. We turn it up to four. As we play, it will choose sections of four steps of the pattern for the bass side and randomly load different ones. And we can turn it on and off as we want. So that's a good way, again, to get a little bit of generative stuff going on, a bit of an extra performance layer in your patterns. So this tutorial is mostly going to be about the drum side, but while we're in the bass section, let's just have a very quick look. I'm going to load up a fresh pattern here. I'm going to press pattern. I'm going to go to bank three and press step one, and then this will be empty. That's just to load up the default bass sound. So uh, while we're in bass mode here, we're changing the settings that are in this pink section at the top. So if we turn the memory knob, we'll load different sounds. And then we can play it with the keys down here. So the function of the two assignable knobs will depend on how they've been set up in the edit mode. That's the pink overlay that we'll get to in the second video. But just go through different sounds and play it with these. And you'll get different effects. So. So that's, this just selects a memory from within a bank, similar to the way that the patterns uh, are saved. You have different banks for sounds as well. So we've got lots of different named banks if we hold shift and turn this first knob. Eight different banks. And then I think it's 16 sounds within each one. And then these buttons here are gonna transpose our keyboard up and down by octaves. So just to clarify, each pattern contains a bass track and a drum track. The bass track can record notes, whereas the drum track can record rhythms. You select different sounds on, on the uh, bass track by using the 
bank and memory uh, selection knobs here, whereas we can choose different kits uh, for the drums. Each pattern has its own pattern settings for bass and drum, so things like length can be different. So you could have 16 step bass and a 64 step drum pattern, for example, running side by side. The changes we make to the edit knobs are saved separately on each track, but then things like pattern level and effects settings and effect selections are saved per pattern. So if we've made any edits to any of our patterns or we've created something we want to save, all we need to do is hold function and press pattern and that will bring up the same bank and memory selector as we saw when we loaded a pattern. So these become bank buttons and these are our memories. So if I just press this one, that will save it back into bank three, memory number one. So let's start to have a look at how we can enter some rhythms into our drum track. So at the moment I've got the bass track selected here, so I'm just gonna pick the drum track by pressing this button. So there's two different modes for entering uh, rhythms on the bass and beats. We've got pad mode, which is set up now so I can press the different white keys and we'll hear the sounds that are within the kit as named on the blue sections here. Or we can pick select mode which makes the white keys choose a drum sound and then we can program the rhythms in on the, button, on the buttons above. So at the moment we're in pad mode which is shown here. So if you press function and then select mode that's just going to choose different uh, drum sounds depending on which white key we press. So kick snare, hi-hat, etc. Well, let's go back into pad mode, so function, pad, and then we can choose a kit. So if we hold function and press drum, that's this here, this is kit selection. And we can just scroll through with the uh, value encoder, or we can hold function and press kit again, and that's gonna skip through by banks. Let's just go back to bank one, and I'll scroll through, and let's load up house. So we've got different sounds loaded up depending on different kits that we've chosen. So pad mode is a good way to play in our rhythms in real time. We can just hit record, play the keys and build up a rhythm that way. But if we press play at the moment, all we've got to guide us is the step number that's shown on the screen. So we really need to turn on our metronome. To do that we hold function and we press the key with metro written below it. So the metronome dialog pops up and we can turn up volume of our metronome with this which will beep then in rhythm. But if we want a pre-count, that is uh, the number of beats before we start to record, we can turn that on by pressing Metro again. That takes us into the pre-count menu. So again, if I set that to four, that'll count four beats before it starts to record. So if I press record now, It's going to record my playing, it's going to quantize our playing to the nearest step, which is why it sounded slightly different uh, to when I played it in. If we want to vary the volume of our hits, we use the velocity function, which is here. So we use the shift lock that we showed earlier, and then as we play, we can turn this and play keys, and that will play them at different volumes. So I can play a, a hi-hat pattern in with varying volumes. So let's turn off that metronome. Back into the metronome menu and turn the volume of the metronome down and the pre-count will still be there. So we've got to turn that off as well. So turn those down and then that's the rhythm we've created. So if we hit record while we're not playing and we cycle through the steps using these buttons, as we go through, we can see on each step that's represented in the screen, which uh, sounds are being played on that step. So we've got a hi-hat and a kick on this step, nothing on that one, just a hi-hat there and so on. So that's the rhythm we programmed in. If we go back to step one, for example, I can program in another part. Um, say I can add a stick on that step and then again on number nine and I'll add it to our rhythm. There's an additional function with this once we're in record mode. If we hold function and go into the system menu down here and scroll through to auto step. If we turn auto step on, 
and then continue through the menu and out the other end. So we're back at our pattern uh, number. If we record again and then go to a step, say step four and add a symbol in, it's automatically going to go to the next step. So we can keep hammering, say, hi-hats in there and it will just paste them all the way through. So let's do that with, uh, I don't know, let's go crazy and just fill it with hi-hat twos. This won't sound good. <laughs> but it saves us from having to scroll through using the step buttons. So I don't want to keep those hi-hats in there because they're not very good. So what I can do is while we're still in record mode, I can press a key on the particular step that we want to remove the hi-hat from, and that will be taken away. So we can go through and just remove a bunch of stuff. Or we can press the step buttons to do the same thing. So that'll remove things. Another method that will work in record mode and also out of record mode is just by holding clear and pressing a step. That will remove no information from those steps. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of all those. So now I'm going to save this pattern again by holding function, pressing pattern, and entering the memory we want to save it into. And we're done. The other method of entering rhythms is the select mode. This is more like an XOX style drum machine uh, programming mode. So if we hold function and go into select, which is here, um, we can see now that we've got kick one selected. As we said earlier, these buttons select the different drum sounds within the kit. So we've got kick one, and this is the rhythm for the kick. So if I just mute everything else a second, we can then just check out that on its own. So you can see uh, where the rhythm lies. We can add and remove uh, information from this by just holding a step and pressing one of the keys. Let's just unmute everything again. And then go out of mute and back to snare. We can see this is a snare rhythm, but if we were in the kick, for example, we wanted to add a snare there, we can still hold a step and press snare and it will be pasted in. So let's say I want to start my rhythm from scratch, but I've got something maybe in the bass track that I want to keep, so I don't want to load a fresh pattern up. We can hold clear and press drum, and then we'll be prompted to choose between notes and sounds. So we can clear our notes, which just takes these notes off. If we clear our sound, it will return the kit back to whatever was in the saved pattern. So scroll to notes, press OK. That's just going to remove our rhythm completely. So let's go through and put a 4-4 kick in. So all we do is pick the kick drum and we hold a step and paste them in. And that gets us that. Then we can select our snare, maybe paste one in on the 5 and the 13. Okay, and then hi-hats, like we said. So I'm just going to paste them all in on all these steps. this one. I quite like that, I'm going to leave it. <laughs> so it's a much more kind of methodical and precise way of programming in a rhythm. If I decide now that 16 steps isn't enough for my drums, I can change the length of the pattern. We do that by holding function and pressing the drum pattern settings button here. And then we're asked to choose a length. So at the moment we're 16, if we scroll back, we can see we're shortening this. I can go back to say 8. But we can be anywhere from 1 to 64 steps. So I'm just going to make that 32, and then I can show you what the page buttons do. So and that's going to be empty because we've not put anything in there yet. So if we go back to our kick and press this to go to page two, we can put a different rhythm in here or something similar. Let's do that. So as we go through, we can see this is red when we're on page one. And that's red when we're on page two. So we stayed in page two here. We can go to the snare and again add in some snare hits. Let's do something random like that. So also in the pattern settings menu, if we scroll past where length is, we've got our note value. This will change the length of these steps relative to the tempo. So we can make it much faster or we can slow down into triplets. 
but this won't affect the speed of the base, for example, so we can have it running at a different rate. I'm just going to put that back to sixteenths. And then the next one along is a random, which we've already looked at. So we've got a separate random for drums and for the bass. We've got a ghost side chain, which is something I'll come to later because that involves the ducking, which is something we'll look at in the bass video. And then we've got swing. That adds a bit of shuffle to our rhythm. So if we play with the turn it up a little bit and we can hear the hi-hats. The higher we get, the more the closer the steps one and two, two and four get together. That's how we create swing. And then head back out of this menu and I'll show you what stutter does. So stutter is another playback mode. We can use this in our live performances. If we turn stutter on and then press one or more steps while the rhythm is running, it'll just loop between those ones that are held. And then as soon as we release those, it'll go back to where it would have been if it, if it wasn't being triggered by stutter like this. So that's a really useful way to spice up your live performances. So pressing the keys in select mode won't preview your sounds. Uh, this is so that we can select sounds and build up rhythms during a jam without constantly hearing stuff that's triggered out of time because we're tapping away. But if you do want to preview your sounds, you can hold shift and that will enable you to hear them. We can also use velocity like we did in the pad mode. So I want say I want to put a, like a ghost kick just here. I can turn velocity down and paste a kick in and that will remember that so that when the sequence plays we've got that little pre-kick and then we need to remember to turn it back up to whatever velocity we want to enter the rest of our steps so that way we can get really into the detail of the pattern as we're programming it while we're in select mode there's two methods of removing steps if you want to we can use the clear and then press step button like we did before or while we're in record mode again we can tap steps on and off So the editing knobs in the drum mode give us access to a few parameters that we can also find in the deep edit mode. Uh, each kit has two kicks, two snares, and two hi-hats. So without holding shift, turning our first knob at the top, we'll lower the volume of both of these kicks. But at the moment we haven't got anything programmed to kick two. So as we turn this down, kick one will go down. And the next one along is snare. So that would, have, that would affect the volume of snare one and two. And then the next one along is hat, and that affects both these hi-hats. And the last knob uh, alters the volume of everything else in the kit. So all these extra sounds on the end, the stick and clap sounds, whatever samples you have set in them. By turning the bottom row of knobs without shift, however, we shorten our sounds. So our first one shortens kick one. So we can make it more punchy. The same thing for snare one and hi-hat one. And the last one without holding shift alters the length of EX1. And while we're holding shift and turning these edit knobs, we're going to alter the pitches of various things, but I'll just put it into shift mode just to make it easier. So shift hold is on. As we turn this first knob, we're gonna alter the pitch of kick one. and then snare one and hi-hat one, and then hi-hat two. So you can get lots of control that way. So we've got pitch controls for kick one, snare one, hi-hats one and two, and then EX is one to four, which are these here. So we don't just have to use these edit knobs to tweak our drums and leave them there, we can automate them. We can do this using the parameter lock function. So this is automation. If the parameter button is green and it's switched on, we can press it to turn it on and off. So let's leave it on for now. I've just tidied the pattern up a little bit, shortened it down to 16 steps, and I'm gonna pick the snare channel. So that's these are snares. If I wanted this one to be a bit shorter, all I need to do is hold the step and turn down the time for snare, which is this knob here. So that will play, this will play at full length and this will play shorter. If 
I wanted to clear that, I can just erase the note and put it back in again, and it'll be back to normal. If I want to do the same thing on the hi-hats, for example, but actually record it in, in real time, I can hold function and press the parameter lock, and that puts us into parameter lock record mode. So then if I play this sequence, let's go to the hi-hats. If I play this sequence and tweak my hi-hat uh, one time, we, that's going to change this in real time. So let's do that. So we can record all sorts of combinations of different tweaks to our sounds in real time. If I record a load of automation and don't like any of it, I can just clear the automation completely by holding clear and pressing parameter lock, and that'll get rid of all that stuff we just did. So we're back to a straight hi-hat pattern. There's also another function for this. We can actually create melodies and extra bass lines and things within our drum section. So some of the kits, depending on what samples have been loaded in in the deep edit mode, can have melodic sounds. So EX4 in this house kit is like a little uh, synth note. So I'll just put a bit of a rhythm in and we'll see what that's like. And then we can automate the pitch of that to get it to play some melodies. So to do that, obviously parameter lock needs to be switched on. I'm going to put it into shift lock mode because we're going to be tweaking the pitch of EX4, which is down here. So if we hold a step and turn it, every five steps on the display is a semitone. So I can drop that maybe to 10 and that'll drop by two notes. And then we can crank this one up a bit. So let's take it up to 25. That's five notes up. It can get pretty complicated pretty quickly by doing this, but it is possible to even program chords in if you're methodical. Make sure you save patterns often, and then you can always got something to fall back onto. So I'm just going to clear those melodic bits that we just made. So I'm going to select EX4 and just hold clear and press the steps just to get rid of them. So we're back to our normal rhythm. Uh, this is because I want to demonstrate effects. Now I just so happen to have chosen a kit which doesn't have any effects send set up for the sounds we've programmed in in deep edit mode. So I'm just going to have to change kits and hold function and press kit and try house four. There we go. So at the moment our effects are turned off. So we need to press the effects button and then hold function and press the same button to cycle through the types. So I'm going to go to hall. I've got lots of different types of effects in here. And then I'm going to play and I'm going to turn up the effects send level, which is shift and the mixer knob for drums, and then also alter the effects mount over here. So that's the amount of the selected sounds that we're sending into the effects section, and this will change another parameter in the effects section depending on which effects type we've chosen. So just as another example, if we go through the effects type again, we can also tweak it using the value knob to change the type. We can go to a insert delay, or we can change it to a send delay, and this becomes time. So only certain drum sounds within the kit will be sent to the effects unit, but this is something we can tweak to our heart's content within the deep edit mode for kits, which I'll come to later. So we've got these additional menus on the bottom here to go over. I'm not going to cover every single function in these in detail because some of them are quite complex and really need to be looked up in the manual. But if we hold function and press a key, we enter a menu for each of these. So by holding function and pressing here, we enter the bass memory edit mode. That's where we use an overlay to edit the bass sounds. And the same for drum kits here, that's a separate overlay. We can use copy and paste here. If we press function and copy, we copy the whole drum track and then we can load up another pattern and paste it in there by using function and paste. We can also use this for copying individual notes. So if this kick here, for example, had some settings in, this, uh, in the sound edit mode, we need to go into record, we hold function, step, copy and then function step paste and that copies that kick over with any of these settings that have been altered. So we also have undo and redo. This will undo and redo the last real time recorded note information or uh, parameter locks. So the way it works is if you record something you don't like it, just stop the sequencer, press function undo and it should return to the previous state. We've got the bass pattern settings. We'll go over that in the next video. We've already covered the ones for drums and metronome. So we've got clock settings. This will change the, the source. You can have an internal clock or you can set it to come from the MIDI 
or the sync in and outs. Also, we can choose to have clock and audio coming out of the output. This is useful for syncing with pocket operators and the ELZ1. Um, we also have the uh, polarity settings rise and fall for each of these, which is for compatibility. We've got MIDI channel settings here for the bass channel and the drum channel and a few other things like program change, uh, for example. And then also there's this additional MIDI menu that's got some things that I can't quite remember off the top of my head, but MIDI out can be changed to through in software, for example. And then we've got these real time messages that can be switched on and off. So I can't quite remember exactly what all these do. They are program change messages. I know that much. <laughs> and then if we go to data menu, we've got a pattern name function. So we can press OK here, scroll through the steps with these bank buttons and we can change the name of the pattern. So we've got letters and numbers in here that we can alter. So let's change that to a Z and press OK. That will be automatically saved. So if I go pattern one, pattern two, it's automatically put that Z on the end for me. Again, in the data menu, there is a pattern export. We can connect our MIDI out up to an audio interface and send a pattern over MIDI into a program like MIDI Ox, which can record it as a SysX message so we can back up our stuff. Then in our system menu, we've got a knob latch uh, function. We can turn on and off. We can have it as jump or latch. There's a really good video on uh, Sonic Web uh, on YouTube that explains this, I'll link to. Um, you can change between global and pattern BPM. Pattern BPM is the default, uh, so the, the BPM is saved within the pattern. So as we change between patterns, it will speed up or slow down, depending on what it's saved. But we can change it to a global BPM, which is altered by holding shift and turning the BPM amount. So if we had that on, for example, and we loaded a pattern that was saved with a different speed, it will just maintain that global speed, and we can change it, the whole thing. I think I explained that properly. <laughs> The next function along in the system menu is pattern chaining looping. By default, that's on. So if we were to use the pattern chain that we showed earlier, it will go two, three, two, three, two, three, backwards and forwards. Uh, the older behavior on the live ones was, was this not to be the case. So there's an uh, option to switch it off there. We also have the auto step that we've talked about. This the setting makes the line in mono, which is quite useful for, for compatibility. Split mode can be turned on and off. That means that the bass will come out of one channel and the drums could come out of another, which is good if you wire them up separately, record the track separately, you can mix them. We've got an overall tuning setting. We've got a battery type. We could choose between alkali, uh, nickel metal hydride and lithium. So if you're using rechargeables, for example, it's best to set it to one of these two modes uh, because this informs the system better of when the batteries are gonna run out. We've got an auto power off setting. I've got mine turned off. By default, it's half an hour. You can go up to six hours or all the way left turns it off. So the kit edit mode is where we can make our own kits and edit the existing ones. We do this by holding function and pressing this key here. And we'll see the same bank and uh, memory selection screen that we're familiar with now. I'm gonna go to bank two and press uh, memory number six, because that's the house kit we've been using so far. Uh, along the bottom here, we can use the keys to preview the sounds. So press OK, and then we drop the overlay on this, the blue one. So we have some per uh, drum sound settings here, and we have some global settings. This EQ, these eight knobs, is just a global setting. So uh, we've got a high pass filter on the bottom with some resonance, and then three band EQ above. At this point, we can press play, and we'll be able to hear the pattern that we've been programming so far. So we can make some pretty drastic changes to our kit that way. I'm just gonna back out by pressing cancel and that will stop me from making stupid changes to my kit. Go back in by pressing okay. And that's undone that. So we can hear that delay effect as well that we set up back on the pattern edit menu. Uh, we can access the effects from here too, but these aren't saved within the kit. They're just a preview so that if we set up say a send level for a hi-hat to an effect we'll be able to hear what it's going to sound like when we get back out onto the main menu the way that we choose samples within our kit is we press uh, the the sound that we want to change so let's say i want to change that uh, snare you can see that it's choosing uh, from the snare category here if we go through these will change so this these hats are both out of that category and then we've got claps and so this is kick two that's out of there but 
there's no reason these have to match. You could program this all with kick drums if you wanted to. So you could change this kick to the cymbal category or percussion, whatever you want. So I'm going to go back to this kick. I'm going to change this kick to something different. Just going to randomly dial something in. There's like there's loads, by the way. There's like 69 different kick drums, all with some editing. So let's just pick something. Let's go with that one. So we can keep previewing our pattern as we're going along. Then we've got a tune setting for it. So it alters the tuning, obviously. And then our time is how long the sample's gonna play for before it gets cut off. So we can shorten stuff. The slope is like a little mini envelope. So um, we've got a decay side attack side so the longer the attack uh, the longer it takes to fade in so we can chop the start off stuff that's a bit more useful on, on different sounds uh, over on this side we've got the effect send amount so at the moment it'll be off for kicks but we can turn that up here and then we've got panning so left and right for each drum and then the individual level for the sample so we can change the kick compared to the snare. So these here, these are all per sample. We, we've got a reverse function here as well that's per sample. We've got a hi-hat link function over here. If we turn that on, these will only be allowed to play one at once. So if you've got open and closed hi-hats saved in a kit, for example, the close will cut off the open hi-hat and vice versa. But if we turn that off, they're allowed to play completely freely. If we, by pressing this button here, we set the overall kit level, which we can tweak up and down. And then we've got velocity here. That is again, that's just a preview. So if we can see what that kit sounds to play like at different velocities. This time our function button is on the end here. We can hold this down and we can use mute to take out certain sounds like we did before. So we can preview our kit with different mutes switched on and off. We also use this to get to these extra menus here. So we've got an initialize button. So if we hold function and press initialize, that is just going to completely wipe everything and it's just going to be kick drums. We can press function and press data, which is a kit export function. Again, if you connected up the MIDI out to a piece of software like MIDI OX, so you could export the whole kit as a sysx file. So to back out of there, we need to press cancel. We've got a copy function here. So press copy and we can import another kit. So I'm just going to let's do that and bring that house kit back in again. So that's copied it back over where we initialized. If we press total effects, that's the total volume of the effects unit. We've got effects on and off here. So you can switch on and off the effects unit. So let's just turn that off a second. So that's off. Like that. And then we've got a type. So we can change the effects type from here too. Like that. Let's go back to that total effects and turn it up. So we can see what it's like with the maximum amount of reverb on, for example. And then we've got our effects amount here. So again, um, the amount function depends on the chosen effects. So if I go back to a send delay, that is the time for the delay. But like I said, these aren't actually saved within the kit. They're just a chance to preview what your edits are going to sound like. I'm just going to turn off the effects unit before we go any further so we can hear properly what's going on. Uh, so effects off. So got a completely dry uh, sound playing there. So if we pick a, something like the snare, for example, and go into the snare um, category here, we've got absolutely loads of different snares to choose from, tons of stuff. And then say, for example, symbol, this is a better one to demonstrate that slope function with. So we can shorten it down to a tiny little click, or we can soften the start like that. So with just a few, uh, just a few functions, we can create lots of different variations of the samples that we've got built into this. So if you're looking to create melodic sounds for your kits, you're best off doing that in EX1 to 4 because they have the ability to alter the pitch. So we can pick, say, EX1 and then go to S, 
FX2 category on the end here, and they start with the melodic sounds, and there's like 20 of them. So as we go through, you've got a few different melodic sounds that you can use to layer up and add to your pattern. So if we want to save what we've done, we can just press OK, and then we'll be pr prompted to choose a bank and sound memory like we did before. So I'm going to go to bank 8, uh, memory 16, which is empty. Press OK once, then we're once again prompted to enter a name, which we can do with the bank buttons to change the cursor and the encoder to change the letters. And then we just press OK, and then we're done. So I really hope you found this useful. There'll be another video coming for the bass uh, part of the bass and beats uh, in the future. I'm not quite sure when that'll be. We're just waiting for some software to be finished before I can show you how to use that. So I uh, really hope you enjoy this. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Cheers.